This is Duke University. It's the story of a, a little girl called Rosita that really has been my call to action. Uh, she's a really smart, capable little girl. I kind of saw her get taken away by some distant relatives when she was old enough to work around the house. So suddenly she didn't have the opportunity to have that the education that was going to take her to the places where she could probably be most successful. At the same time, another friend of mine was a school teacher and she had told me one day that some of her kids were swimming across a river to get to school. And so while I'm dealing with this idea of like, I don't know what's going on with Rosita, something crazy and really confusing, poverty basically, is what's preventing her from being successful. But my friend over here, there's a river and the kids can't get across to get to school. So that has a simple solution, a footbridge. And so that's when I was like, okay, I can't do anything about that crazy poverty thing right now, but a footbridge, that is totally manageable. And so that was my first, like, all right, I, I see a little piece that I can do here. Bridges to Prosperity builds um, er, and trains people how to build these footbridges all over the world. I got to partner with them and build that footbridge. I think my time working actually at Bridges to Prosperity has really got me excited about thinking about systems. So how do we move beyond one bridge? How do we put in place systems that can get footbridges built? Ideally without the team having to fly in to make that happen. There are smart, capable people all over the world and I believe that those people deserve access to the resources they need to live healthy and productive lives. I was a social worker in DC's foster care system and, and dealt with a lot of teenagers who were far behind in school due to a lot of issues related to chronic stress and trauma. Uh, and we had to find a way that we could catch high school kids up. Uh, and when you're that far behind in reading, generally you need access to elementary school content. So the question that we decided to answer was, how do you get high school kids to read elementary school books in a way that's both engaging and empowering? So we founded REACH, uh, which is an organization that hires and trains high school students who are struggling uh, to be elementary school reading tutors and children's book authors. And through the process, not only did the elementary school students experience pretty significant reading growth, uh, but so do their tutors. Uh, so our average tutor comes to us reading at about a fifth grade level. Uh, and about 75% of them are at grade level by the end of 11th grade. So we're able to close that gap through intense relationships, through what we call an unconditional commitment, so you cannot be fired from REACH, uh, and through giving them work that they find to be purposeful and relevant. For the high school kids, it's often the only time where they can practice elementary school literacy skills, foundational skills that they need to solidify uh, in a way that they don't have to feel like they're being remediated. They don't have to feel stupid and give up their dignity to do it, and it really makes them feel proud in a way that they generally don't get to feel at school. When I was in seminary, a classmate of mine was murdered doing civil rights work down in Alabama, and in the last second of his life, he pushed a 16-year-old black girl out from in front of a shotgun that went off and killed him instantly. And uh, no surprise at the time, the shooter was found innocent on the tr what seems to me to be the uh, dubious grounds of self-defense. I've tried to be a, what they glibly call a justice person ever since. I did social work in the Appalachian part of upstate New York and work with very poor families that I, need, I knew needed more than social work, they needed health care. And I thought, oh, I need to get into public health and be a public health nurse. I think trite to say this, but the truth is 
It really is exciting to me to actually save a life. I claim that none of us go into this work for the kick of saving a life, but when something like that actually happens, we feel useful.